Chum. Hello YouTube, it's Akrovit again, and this is the latest version of the MPC hardware from Akai, the MPC Key 61. There's been a few rumors and a few leaks and stuff about this one, but I have the actual unit and I want to talk to you guys about this one. Let's get into the specifications and all the new stuff that's going on here, but first of all, let's get it out of the box like this. So what we're talking about here is basically a brand new standalone MPC, but in the shape and form factor of a workstation keyboard. 61 velocity sensitive keys, 16 drum pads, the touchscreen, transport controls, as well as this touch slider over here that we first saw on the MPC Studio. This one has a few new tricks up its sleeve, but it's still an MPC and it runs the MPC software natively. What's really cool about the MPC Key 61 when it comes to the software is that this one now comes with a whole range of new instruments that we just haven't seen before at all. That's really exciting and cool, and since there is a lot of stuff to talk about here, I'm not going to be able to cover the instruments in this video. Let's focus on the hardware and the actual device, and I'm going to make another video tomorrow or the day after that to focus on the instruments themselves. Some of them, or actually most of them, sounds really good and is super, super useful for beat making and overall music production. This entire unit is built out of plastic, but it seems to be the same material and build quality as the MPC-1, so it doesn't have this rubbery feeling coating thing that we see on the MPC Live. And even though it's all plastic, it feels high quality, big and sturdy and heavy enough to comfortably be brought onto a stage for a show with a band, be set up in a studio permanently or something like that. But you won't see me bringing this one to the woods to make a beat making session in the wilderness. That just doesn't make sense for something like this, right? And when it comes to the hardware, this one has a little bit of this and a little bit of that. So the pads are the same ones as we found on the MPC-1, so the smaller size MPC pads, that's not a problem to me, I've gotten used to the ones on the 1, but it's worth mentioning that they're not the full size MPC pads as the MPC Live has. But still. The transport control over here is taken from the MPC-X, with the extended controls over here where you can skip steps and skip events like that. We have the same style of 4 Q-Link knobs over here, similar to the ones we see on the MPC Live. Not 8 or 16 of them, but 4. The 7-inch touchscreen is the same as we've seen before, and this touch lighter over here is taken from the MPC Studio. But it's a little bit shorter and a little bit wider, but it has the same functionality to it. We can use it to control our effects, to play notes in scales or whatever, depending on what we set up on the MPC itself. And we can also do note repeat to control the note repeat value and the speed of it up and down. Internally, this one comes with 4 gigabytes of RAM instead of 2, and it also has 32 gigs of internal storage inside of it. But you're also able to install a separate SSD drive inside of this one to expand storage for samples and instruments and stuff like that. Having 4 gigabytes of RAM makes total sense to me because they're now introducing more instruments and more sample libraries and stuff like that, and more RAM equals more memory to load samples, instruments, and bigger chunks of audio onto. It's worth mentioning that the MPC Key 61 doesn't come with a built-in SD card reader inside of it like the other MPCs do. I found that to be a little bit of a problem at first, but then I realized that I could just use one of these guys. You know, just a normal USD SD card reader that goes into the back, put your SD card in there and everything just works as normal. You know, that's a little bit confusing at first, but the fix is kinda simple and affordable, so it's not the end of the world. The keybed itself is a nice semi-weighted 61 key velocity sensitive keyboard with aftertouch. And initially I felt like the keys came to a bit of a hard stop at the end of the key travel, but I'm definitely not a professional keyboard player so I don't really know what I'm talking about. And it took me about 5 minutes to realize that that's probably more of a feature than a drawback. And for all I know, Scott Storch seems to be a big fan of the keyboard, so let's leave that up to professionals like him. So we need to talk about the new layout and the new buttons and everything that's going on here, but before we get into that, let's mention the connectivity, the I.O. on the back. Starting over here with three different foot pedal inputs for expression, FS2 and sustain, followed by three different MIDI ports for throughout and in, and eight CV gate connections on separate jacks right here. 
When it comes to audio, we're getting two audio inputs on this one, on these combined line and XLR jacks. They can be set to instrument or line level signals, and these ones also sends out phantom power if you want to use a condenser mic with this MPC without having to use an external audio interface. That way we're able to record high quality audio from a condenser mic straight into one of the audio tracks on the MPC. That's kind of cool. We're also getting four audio outputs, as well as a separate headphone output, two USB-A connections for external devices, USB thumb drives and such, and also this USB-B connection for connecting this MPC up to a computer. Lastly, we have this network connection and, of course, a power switch. The MPC Key 61 also has Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, if you want to hook it up to a QWERTY keyboard over Bluetooth, get your updates over Wi-Fi, or maybe use Ableton Link functionality wirelessly to an iOS device. All that stuff works. And just like the other MPCs in the lineup, this one is also compatible with class compliant audio interfaces for getting more audio or MIDI connectivity like that. Now let's take a closer look at the actual faceplate here and check out what's new, what's been rearranged and how everything just works. I've already mentioned that the transport control here is taken straight from the MPC-X and there's not really much to say about it, but it does make life a little bit easier when it comes to navigation on the timeline. We're now able to skip small increments like that and bigger increments like that and always make sure to know exactly where we are on the timeline. So that's really cool. One thing that is completely new over here though is that we now have a physical button for the automation read or write modes. It goes from write to read so we always know if we're reading or writing automation and this used to be just a thing on the screen over here so I think it's nice to get a physical button for it. We also have the mute, mix, grid, edit, sample edit, timing correction and undo buttons over here plus this brand new keyboard control one. That basically sends us to a menu where we can change how the keyboard interacts with the system in general. We can edit settings for our aftertouch as well as transposing the keyboard up and down and set scales and stuff like that for the keyboard. So that's kind of cool to see. And we also have this shift button over here which is a little bit more interesting than you might expect because we have another one over there later on. The four touch sensitive Q-Link knobs over here, the Q-Link button, this one, as well as the plus and minus for the menu options. And over here, 16 levels, full level, erase, copy, this secondary shift button. That actually comes in handy more than you might think, because sometimes my hands are over here and sometimes they're over there. So to me, that's kind of a nice touch. Menu button, this new dedicated sounds button that goes to the new browser mode, of course. And the main button over here, and of course, the 16 drum pads that we've already talked about. Then there's the touch strip of course and the controls for that one plus this new design and layout for the pad banks that actually makes a lot of sense and is really comfortable to work with and on the far left hand side we have the main volume a shortcut menu to access the arpeggio and the settings for that as well as a transpose option up and down a pitch wheel and a mod wheel with this nice white light shining through and yeah, I guess that's pretty much it as far as the hardware goes. One thing I want to add though is that the buttons on this unit doesn't feel like anything I've had from Akai before. I guess my best comparison here would be that the buttons feels and sounds more like the ones on Native Instruments machine than on the MPC-1 or live. You know, they have this satisfying click to them and you can actually feel the tactile feedback whenever they get hit and the buttons are made of a softer kind of rubber than before and it doesn't take the same amount of force to hit them. To me that's good but of course that's a matter of personal preference, right? Now is this just an MPC with a keyboard hooked up to it? Well, I would say that it's actually a little bit more than that, because I'm developing a workflow here for my production that's different from what I get from the MPC-1 or MPC Live. And some of the shortcut menus just makes a lot of sense and just improves my overall workflow, which is always welcome. And of course, if you're a proper keyboard player and you want access to all of these instruments and sounds and effects and stuff for a tour or a live show or something, this makes a lot of sense in that case too. And I just think that it's cool in general that a company like Akai has more than just one product. Depending on who you are, depending on your budget, depending on your needs, whatever like that. I think this is a great addition to the already existing MPCs in the lineup. I'm sure some real studio heads will go nuts about this one. And I use a lot of synths and keyboards and stuff for my beats too. And having something like this available to me to access all the MPC software instruments and plugins, plus the new ones that this one comes with, especially together with all the stuff that we saw in the 2.11 update for this one that has to do with MIDI filtering, editing key ranges, stacking stuff and instruments on top of each other on different tracks. All the new stuff in the latest firmware just makes a lot of sense on this new piece of hardware. 
And again, let's do a deeper dive into the new instruments and presets and the settings that it comes with in my next video. I'm not a big fan of using the term game changer, but some of the new instruments here are really something a little bit extra. Now, thanks a lot for watching this video. I hope I've been able to answer some of the questions that you guys might have about this new MPC Key 61 from Akai. I would love some feedback and some questions and stuff in the comments down below, so feel free to leave that right there. Again, thanks a lot for watching. I hope to see you guys in the next video. Until then, ha det gott! Accurate beats.